All right, guys, it's a beautiful day. It warmed up a bunch. We're at 18 degrees above zero, which hasn't happened for a long time. And today we are heading out to a remote lake to try our hand at some pike fishing. Okay, so, so far we've got our holes drilled. We got our two tip ups in there. We've got shrimp on one, and then we got a little fish. I think it was a small herring on the other one. And then we're gonna drill two more holes kind of next to each other, and that's what we're gonna use our actual poles on. And I think we're gonna put some bait on those too. in that hole for like 30 seconds and this is what we got freaking exciting first pike ever oh yeah it bit it bit i felt it and awesome. i yanked it up yes yes yes, Woo! yes i ain't going home empty handed today beautiful fish he's unfortunately got a little ice on him gorgeous yes. good job baby he hit right away i gotta get back in the hole yep all right we caught the monster there he is so this guy was, our holes are about six feet from each other. He was hitting aerials, got off, got mine, got off. Went back to aerials, came back to mine, we got him. Two pike. So that's what I'm using to catch that guy. It was this spoon and then I had just a piece of herring on there. So I'm gonna get another piece of herring on here and get it back in the water. So we've been fishing out here for probably hour to an hour and a half. Well, we got two bites and two fish. So. We got our tip ups over there. Absolutely no actions on those so far. I checked the bait, the bait's still good. So seems like active jigging over here on these holes is what's working for us today. Oh, he's a big one. He's a, oh my God, he's gonna break my okay, line. Okay, don't let him break your line, no. No, don't let him break it. He's not, he's not. Oh, he's, he's still on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, take your time. Take your time with it. Do you want me to grab the line? He's still on? He's still on. Oh, he is fighting. He's a big one. Hold on, hold on. I don't know if you're gonna get him up. He's gonna break your line. He broke my hold line. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just gonna be easy. Hold on, hold on. Grab. Don't, don't grab mine. Don't grab him by the back of the head. Back of the head. Throw him out. Yeah! Woohoo! God. <laughs> nice two for you, yeah. Mister. So this one, 
Ariel's fishing this hole. She feels something huge. It snapped her line. I took mine out of my hole, put it in this one. He immediately went on there, took my bait. He hit my he hit mine pretty hard. Took my fish right off. So I just stuck the spoon in there as is, no bait. He came back. Oh my gosh. I don't know what pound line I have on here. I think I only have like a seven or an eight pound line. I thought for sure he's gonna break it. He was gonna break this. I barely got my drag loose in time. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so that one we just caught, he's about the same as the one we caught earlier, and they're about 27 to 28 inches, but he's a lot bigger, he's a lot heavier and thicker, and then the smaller one we caught is about 22 to 23 inches. All right, so that bite came in about 30 minutes or maybe 40 minutes after the second one, so it seems like they're spaced pretty far apart, and when they come in, they're pretty determined to bite whatever is in front of them, so we're, we're getting lucky, I think, with both of us being so close to each other. That last one, we think he snapped the line maybe or it cut because they have these really sharp teeth and we don't have leaders on, which I know is common for fishing with pike. Eric's getting our other line set back up. All right, so far, my take on what is working is I think it is the movement of these spoons because we've had our tip ups over there, pretty much the same area we're at right now with just bait and no movement and we have not had any strikes on the tip ups. I think what's drawing them in is these spoons falling down and fluttering down in the water. Um, and it's a good idea I think now that we have our holes so close to each other because when we bring one in, we have two lines in the water and we got you know double the chance. So I got a spoon on here, piece of herring, I'm gonna get it back in the hole. All right, so I just had another strike on mine. Um, it took the bait that hasn't come back so I'm thinking it was maybe a smaller one but um, we're just gonna keep fishing for a little while longer it seems like every half an hour to 45 minutes is when one of those fish show up and besides that one that just took my bait we've gotten every single one that's bitten our lures we haven't noticed a difference between the shrimp or the fish they seem to go for both of them they are almost hitting mine first so I don't know if that's just the direction that they're swimming in this lake. And then if I can't get them, Eric will get them. Something that I was researching before we came out here was barometric pressure. That's something that I read affects fishing activity and we wanted to look into it. And today is I think a good example of that because we have a shift in weather and there is a shift in the air pressure. So that does affect how they bite. And I don't know if that's working to our advantage or disadvantage today, but so far things are going pretty well. All right guys, no more action on the holes, so we're gonna call it quits. Uh, we're probably about nine miles from where our truck is parked, and we've never done this trail system before. The trails are marked out here, but um, we just wanted to kind of head back before it got too dark. So we're gonna load the fish up, head out of here. Awesome day out there. It was super fun. It's one of those days where you just like have a grin on your face no matter what. Um, so it's a really fun experience. And I just wanted to point out why we didn't have our dogs with us. So lately when we go ice fishing, they are getting older and they just find it to be too cold and they just sit there and whine, honestly. So we've been deciding that we're not gonna bring them and they can stay at home and they're cozy and happy by a fire. And that just works out better for us, especially since this was a shorter trip today. So that's why you didn't see them, but of course they're still going to go on lots of adventures with us, especially in the summertime. Yep, awesome day out there, and like we said earlier, it wasn't too cold, so it made this trip a lot funner. We hit a little bit of snow on the ride back, but it wasn't too bad, and we're going to head home and cook that fish up. Alright guys, we made it back to the cabin, we got our fire going, and we are hungry and ready to eat dinner. 
a couple things. We measured these fish. The biggest one was 29 inches and he weighed exactly four pounds. So not only were these the first pike that we ever caught, but they are pretty big ones in our book. So I'm gonna start with this small guy, get him filleted, kinda of do some practice on him. I have filleted one pike before, that was over the summer. I did it with a pocket knife on the back of a canoe. Did a decent job, but I've done some research and I think you can get probably three fillets out of this little guy, but these bigger ones you're supposed to be able to get five boneless fillets, so that's what we're going for. Let's get started. So this is what's left after we filleted our pike. I did the best job I could, but I'm not too worried about it because tomorrow this is all gonna go to the chickens and they're gonna love this. We got a bunch of awesome fillets here. These are from the bigger fish. I'm gonna go ahead and get the skin off these ones and these are gonna be boneless skinless fillets. And then from that small fish, he was a little smaller. I just got him in this pan right here and those are just gonna be cooked with the skin on and we'll pick the meat off. All right, we've got our cast iron skillet hot and I've got some lard in there. All I'm gonna do with this fish is I'm gonna fry it up in some of this oil, put a little parsley on it before it's done and then we're gonna be eating. All right guys, our catching cook is coming to an end. Let's try this fish, it looks awesome. And on the side, we have some of our daikon radishes which are pickled. A little bit of onion, pepperoncinis, and we have some of our fries, what we're calling, and those are just potatoes, parsnips, and carrots that we cooked in the oven. I've tried Northern Pike before, and it is delicious. I'm gonna say the first time I had it, I thought it was better than salmon. Let's see if I'm still right. All right, this fish, I'm not lying, is the best fish ever. Um, like I said, it's better than salmon, in my opinion. It's really, it's, it's not oily, it's really crisp and fresh and clean. Really nice white meat. It, it's delicious, I love pike. We've got a bunch more to cook up for tomorrow. Ariel's gonna come in here cause she's eyeballing her plate. We're gonna eat dinner and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> the monkeys and the Wizard of Oz dance like that. The struggle of being cheapskates, not buying a gas auger. The best part is you can come all the way out here do a bunch of holes like this and not even catch a fish? Doesn't seem like I'm getting anywhere. 